In Creo Parametric, there are a number of advanced selection methods for selecting curve chains and surface sets. And these have a number of different uses in Creo Parametric. For example, sometimes when you're trying to create a copy geometry feature, you want to grab different surface sets or edge chains. Also, some other different uses include the copy and paste features. If you're selecting the references for rounds, chamfers, and draft features, even shell features, if you're trying to exclude certain surfaces, you want to use a surface set. Uh, also, for performing measurements, if you're trying to get the length of entities or trying to get a surface area. For trajectories and edges of boundary blends and also geometry patterns, all these different tools sometimes require you to select advanced curve chains and surface sets. And so in this video, we will take a look at how to do that. First, let's start off with doing our curve chains. So for example, let's say that I want to select various edges in here. I'll position my mouse over the edge and then select it with the left mouse button. And you're probably aware that if you hold down the control key, you can do a multi-select if you're trying to pick multiple different edges. And if you select an edge that you don't want, simply hold down the control key and deselect it. So that's the basic method for a multi-select. But for your advanced selection methods, you are using the shift key. So for example, let's say I want to grab all these different edges. Maybe I'm trying to measure the length of those different edges. You can select an edge, and then if you hold down the shift key, you'll be able to get different combinations. And if I just leave my mouse over here, you can see right now I'm getting a one by one chain. So I can select that in there and then select an additional edge. And right now I'm building up a chain one by one, which in a lot of cases is just like holding down the control key. But be aware that when you're doing the one by one chain, you're not allowed to select non-tangent or non-connected edges. So that is the one by one method. Let's say I wanna get all the different tangent edges. I can select the edge, Again, I'm holding down the shift key, and if I hover my mouse over here, right now I'm getting the surface loop. Sometimes you might have trouble getting the tangent loop. So if you tap the right mouse button, that is query select. And let me go back to the next edge over here. Here you can see now I'm getting the tangent chain. Now I've gotten all the edges that are tangent to my first selection. The next one that we'll take a look at is a boundary chain. And the boundary chain is used for quilts or non-solid surfaces. And that's what I have over here. So I will select an edge. Then if I hold down the shift key, right now you'll see that I'm getting the boundary edges from that particular quilt feature. Also, you can select the edges associated with a surface loop. And that's what I was getting before. Let's say I select an edge over here and then hold down the shift key. If my mouse is over the middle of the surface, especially, that allows me to get all the edges that form the loop of that surface. And if I had an interior cut or some other different features, sometimes you have multiple different choices for which surface loop that you want. And another choice, let's flip this model over and take a look at the other side. Let's say I want to get a from to chain. I can select an edge over here. And then if I hold down the shift key and go to this edge over here, right now I'm getting the tangent chain. But if I tap the right mouse button, here I'm getting the from to loop. And in this particular case, it went clockwise around over here. But Again, if you tap the right mouse button when you're holding down the shift key, here I'm getting one from two chain. I'll tap again, and here I'm getting the from two chain on the other side. So those are the different methods of selecting your different edge chains and curve chains. Now let's take a look at surface sets. So if I want to select multiple surfaces, I can select one, and then hold down the control key and select other ones. That is the basic method for doing a multi-select. Again, it's with a control key. But if you want to get the different surface sets, you're going to use the shift key or sometimes the uh, right mouse button. So for example, if I select a surface over here and then hold down the right mouse button, in the pop-up menu, I have the option to select solid surfaces. 
I am in Creo Parametric 6.0. If I was in an earlier version of the software, sometimes when you select a surface and then hold down the right mouse button, it'll just open up a small window and it'll just say solid surfaces and you can select that. And now it's grabbed all the solid surfaces in the model. You'll notice that the surfaces from the quilt are not selected. But then we have some other advanced surface methods like selecting the surfaces that loop around an edge. So for example, let's say I want to select this surface and this one and this one and this one around over here, all the way around in here. That's kind of a lot of picks, especially in some other different models. But if I want to grab all these surfaces that loop around this edge, I can start off by selecting the surface then hold down the shift key and select an edge on there. And now it's grabbed all the surfaces that loop around that seed surface and using that particular edge over there. And let's say I wanted to get the surfaces on the outside as well. What I can do is I can also use the control key for doing a multi-select. So I've got my first surface loop. I'll hold down the control key and select this edge and then hold down shift and grab that one over there. And now I have actually two different surface loops selected. So that was a combination of using the control key for doing the multi-select and the shift key for getting my loop surfaces. And the last surface set method that we'll take a look at is called the seed and boundary. And this one users sometimes have issue with, but this one is very, very convenient, especially if you're trying to do a geometry pattern. Also, I find it's very convenient if you're trying to do a copy and paste of a bunch of different features in your model. And so for doing the seed and boundary, let's say I want to grab all the surfaces associated with this boss. What you're going to do is you're going to start off by selecting a seed surface, like this surface over there. Then hold down the shift key and select a boundary surface. And it's going to select all the surfaces starting with the seed surface going down to the boundary surface. And when you're selecting your boundary surface, you can actually use more than one surface by again using the control key. So again, just to show that one more time, select a seed surface, hold down the shift key and select a boundary surface. And I've always likened this to one of those champagne waterfalls that you might see at a wedding where you fill the top glass that is arranged in a pyramid and you fill the top glass and it flows down to the second level and the third level and fourth level until it hits the tabletop. That's sort of what the seed and boundary method is. So there you have it, a number of different curve chains and surface set methods. Sometimes it can be kind of difficult selecting these different tools. And so for that reason, you have the ability of using a details button in a number of these different features. For example, let's say that I was trying to apply draft to a whole bunch of different surfaces over here, and I was having trouble using that loop method. Well, I can start the draft tool and then from the references tab for selecting my draft surfaces, I can go to details and right now in the surface sets dialog box, we're on individual surfaces and I could pick surfaces one by one, but if I click the add button, this will allow me to define a set and you'll start off by selecting an anchor surface like this surface over here. And right now the method is loop surfaces, so it wants to know my loop edge. So I can pick this edge over here, and it grabbed all those different ones. And just like before, if I want to add another set of surfaces, again, we'll set select our anchor. And this time for the loop edge, I will select this outside edge over here. And that allows me to grab, in this case, looks like 28 total surfaces. Let's click the OK button. And now I've got all my draft surfaces selected. Then I can select my draft hinge, with my, which might be this surface. And then I could configure my chamfer feature. Excuse me, my draft feature. The model intent menu. And choose create a published geometry feature. For constructing surface sets, I could say, hey, let's go to the details button. And I'll click the add. And let's select our seed surface, the anchor surface. 
and then here I'll choose seed and boundary and select my boundary surfaces and that way it grabs all of those different surfaces in there that is great now for my edge chains I can go to the details button and change this to rule based and right now it's got a tangent chain let's select the anchor now I'll grab all those different edges for me. So in that way I use the detail buttons in order to construct my publish geometry feature that allows me to grab what I want using those different sets. All right, so there was a lot in there. How do you remember all that stuff? Well, you don't have to. If you go to support.ptc.com, you can download various different quick reference cards. And here I have opened the Creo Parametric 4.0 quick reference cards. And on page 11, we have all the methods for constructing our different chains of edges and curves. So you see here individual chains. Here we have tangent, boundary, surface, loops, from, to, etc. If I go to page 12, here's how we, we construct our surface sets. And here you see solid surfaces, quilt surfaces, loop surfaces, seed, and boundary. So this quick reference card is very convenient. And there's a lot more on here in addition to the different surface sets. So just a great reference, especially if you are relatively new to Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.